there and welcome to Bad Juju. My name is Mama Jules and today I'm reporting on our case from the dining room to see if the audio is any better. So please drop a comment in the box down below and let me know your views. Okay. Our case today takes place in Ohio, USA, where a three-year-old child was taken from his troubled mother and put into the care system. What should have been a second chance at a family life turned into a horrifying tragedy. So if you're ready, grab a tea or a coffee, get comfortable, and together we will investigate the senseless murder of Marcus Faisal. Marcus Faisal was a three-year-old little boy from Ohio. He was born on the June the 24th, 2003 to mother Donna Treviso and father Timothy Dolby. He was one of three siblings and was described as an awesome little guy who loved bubbles, flowers and the children's TV show Bob the Builder. Marcus had autism and was developmentally delayed so he had to attend a school for children with special needs. He was very active and much harder to keep up with than his two other siblings, Michael and Peaches, and his mother Donna found him difficult to handle. Donna was also in a violent relationship with her current boyfriend. Frequent calls were made to the police due to the ongoing abuse and fights between the two of them. The family found themselves on the radar of Children's Welfare Services in September 2005, when the police spotted bruising on Marcus when they went to investigate another incident at the home. They said the house reeked of faeces and was infested with fleas. In January 2006, two-year-old Marcus climbed out of the second-storey window of their home in Grime Street, Middletown, Ohio, and fell onto the pavement below. He suffered cuts to his chin and mouth that required stitching. On April the 22nd of that year, Marcus was found wandering the streets after getting out of the house and was almost hit by a car. After intervention by Children's Welfare Services in May of 2006, Donna admitted that she was not coping and she was overwhelmed. She agreed to place Marcus and his two siblings into the temporary care of family services. Marcus was placed with an agency called Lifeway for Youth, who then placed him with Liz and David Carroll. Unbeknownst to the agency, David should have been disqualified as he was unfit to be a foster parent due to being diagnosed with mental health issues, including bipolar disorder. The Carrolls also had a living girlfriend named Amy Baker, who the agency wasn't made aware of. Marcus had been with the Carrolls for around two months when, on August the 15th, Liz reported Marcus missing. She said she was at Julif's Park with a group of four children. These were Marcus, another foster child, Liz and David's biological child, and a toddler who she was babysitting at the time. She apparently collapsed and blacked out due to having low blood sugar. And she said when she regained consciousness, Marcus had gone. Liz contacted the authorities and a search began. 2,000 volunteers from the local area, search dogs and police searched for Marcus for a week without success. On August the 22nd, Liz Carroll headed a press conference pleading with whoever had Marcus to please return him. However, investigators were suspicious of Liz Carroll from the get-go. There was no witnesses to the event and there was no evidence of them ever having been at Julif's Park when she said they were there. For weeks, investigators tried to piece together the last time Marcus was seen alive. After some decisive action, detectives took in both Liz Carroll and Amy Baker for questioning. After a while, Amy cracked and told them a horrifying version of what had happened. In front of prosecutors and a grand jury, she testified that Marcus was not in fact missing, but that Liz and David Carroll had took Marcus, wrapped him in a blanket and bound it with packing tape to form a cocoon type shape. They then put a playpen in a cupboard in the house and put Marcus inside the playpen, inside this cocoon. Then they closed the cupboard and went away for the weekend to a family reunion in Kentucky.
They left no food or water. When they returned home, Marcus was dead. The cause of death was believed to be from the 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit heat inside the cupboard, which is about 41 to 43 degrees centigrade. He died sometime between the 4th and the 6th of August. Amy also testified that Liz and David drove Marcus's body to a chimney on an 88-acre estate in Brown County, Ohio. They there repeatedly burned the body to try to dispose of him. She said that what remained of Marcus after the burnings was then taken by herself and David and thrown into the Ohio River. Hamilton County Coroner Odell Owens released his findings into Marcus's death. He said 18 human bones were collected from the chimney, which were believed to belong to an infant child. The bones were so tiny that they would fit into a small plastic cup. During the closing arguments at the trial, the prosecutor said, You've heard the phrase you wouldn't treat a dog like that. Well, you know what? She didn't. She took the dog with her. She took the dog with her. On February the 21st, 2007, foster mum Liz Carroll was sentenced to 54 years to life in prison. On the 27th of February, David Carroll was sentenced to 15 years to life. Despite Amy Baker admitting to help him dispose of Marcus's remains, the charges against her were later dropped. On the 21st of April 2007, the chimney that was used to burn Marcus's remains was demolished. Well, once again, that's all for this time, but hopefully we can all meet again next week to in investigate more true crime together. Until then, look after one another and stay safe. Love to you.